Hello, my name is Kira Streck, and I'm one of the curators of the exhibition Fashion Forward, Centering Justice and Fashion History at the Textiles and Clothing Museum at Iowa State University. Within this exhibition, the curatorial team grouped objects into themes, one of which being women and feminism. One of the objects included in this theme is a patchwork quilt from circa 1865. Quilting often has been discounted as an art because of its association with, quote, women's work, but has functioned as a creative outlet and economic support for many people. Approximately 99% of quilters are women. And for many of them, the social aspects of quilting, such as quilters' guilds and quilting circles, are as important to them as the craft. According to sociologists Mary Beth C. Stout and Rachel Conti, women quilters experience, quote, self-actualization, self-enrichment, feelings of group accomplishment, and enhancement of self-image by participating in the hobby. Quilting is part of a long history of women's cottage crafts. Originally, women sewed quilts to provide warmth for their family, but they managed to simultaneously show off their skilled needlework. Historically, quilts have been regionally distinct because women often were inspired by their neighbors' quilts. For example, album quilts such as this one were popular during the mid-1800s in Baltimore. Quilters meticulously sewed a different motif onto each block. Quilting societies and quilters' guilds have also existed throughout the hobby's history and have been integral to women's leadership and community building. For instance, in 1883, women church members in Lamoni, Iowa, held self-governed quilting circle meetings inspired by parliamentary procedures. Since central heating has become more widespread in modern homes, quilts have had less essential function in the home. However, women have continued to make quilts as a hobby or to sew. This often puts strain on the heteronormative nuclear family dynamic because women are often expected to prioritize their family's well being over their own creative, mental, and economic welfare. In the 1970s, quilting began to resurge in part because of the United States bicentennial. Due to changing family structures and economic hardships during this period, some women made and sold quilts to provide for their children. Quilting remains a popular hobby today. According to the Quilting in America survey, in 2020, there were approximately 10 to 12 million quilters in North America. The survey also identified that, quote, the average quilter is a retired woman in her 60s with a household income of $74,000. Although race, ethnicity, and other demographic information was not collected, the company behind the survey, Premier Needle Arts, felt, quote, they were not predictors or indicators of quilters' behavior or habits, and the company did not release a more detailed demographic breakdown. Although Premier Needle Arts attempts to depoliticize quilting, many quilters today engage in critical making and quilting as activism. From September 2015 through 2016, the Gone But Not Forgotten project brought together experienced and novice quilters to sew quilts memorializing 144 victims of police violence. The project involved 15, quote, peace circles, quilting circles, during which quilters honored victims' stories and sewed patches of the quilt. Gone But Not Forgotten has helped over 200 participants of various backgrounds engage in conversations surrounding transformative justice, community safety, and police accountability. The final quilt is almost 40 feet long. According to its website, quote, Gone But Not Forgotten appears to be the most comprehensive public collection of information about who has been killed by the police in Chicago. Because the quilt and supplementary materials contain information about the victims pulled from police records, newspaper articles, and discussions with the victims' families. Throughout US history, quilts have acted as an interface between women and their surroundings. This 1865 quilt and other objects within Iowa State's Textiles and Clothing Museum's collection represent past efforts to combat women's oppression 
and we aim to center intersectionally marginalized women's positions in society. Through the objects in this theme, we aim to critically uncover relationships between objects within our collection and the subjugation of women in Western cultures. You can view other stories and objects relating to women and feminism and the other themes through our digital exhibition, Fashion Forward, Centering Justice in Fashion History.